welcome to episode two of Yamajo, Utah, or Utah Yama style. Up here with my uncle, Yama uncle. And today we are at the Sand Flats Recreation Area. Right now we're going to do the Fins and Things Trail. And the scenery could not be more beautiful. And we could not have asked for a better day either. And here we are at Fins and Things. This should be a good ride. We'll find out. We got a recommendation from a local here that we needed to check out Fins and Things. I haven't done much research on it, but he said it's a good ride. Lots of good views. So we'll see how it turns out. Fins and things. Yeah, it looks like a few Jeeps come through this area. Let's get my uncle up here in front so you guys can see what the train looks like, aside from my handlebars. Oh, this would be fun in a Jeep. <laughs> Woo! You get some serious traction on this sandstone. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was a good, good descent there. Woohoo! That's steep. Well, this stuff is about straight down. That's <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Don't want to goose it too much on that sandstone. I'll end up on my back. Woo! Oh, that is that's steep. <laughs> Well, one thing's for sure, Utah is darn rocky. It is mighty rocky. So let's talk a little bit about two strokes and four strokes, since we have a very good demonstration going on right here. What we got in front is a Yamaha TT 350. It's an old school trail bike, but it, it was a, it's a phenomenal bike. Extremely reliable, great power band. Not a not a racer by any means, but perfect for this kind of stuff. Has great suspension. It's a little on the heavy side, but it, it's a good bike. It's actually that's actually my dad's old bike, the one that he broke his leg on. So the four-stroke has a uniform power band. Basically from an idle all the way up to the red line, it's going to be a consistent pull. Granted, you know, the horsepower numbers will change, but in terms of what you feel on the bike, it's very, very uniform. It's not, there's no peaks and dips in the power band. It's all consistent. And I'm on the WR250 two-stroke which is also a trail bike. The four-stroke, the 350, I think he's running about 30 horsepower, would be my, my guess. I wouldn't say there's much more than 30 horsepower on it. And it weighs 200 and 270 pounds dry. My WR is running a little over 50 horsepower and it's about 220, 230 pounds dry. So obviously in a race, it's not a contest. The two-stroke is going to take it. Two-stroke wouldn't have a, or the four-stroke wouldn't have a chance. And it doesn't. Whenever we get it a nice straightaway and open it up, he doesn't stand a chance. So the four-stroke doesn't stand a chance in a dead-on race. Two-stroke will blow it out of the water. It's lighter and has way more horsepower. 
but like I was talking about with the uniform power band that the four stroke has, when you go into these corners, he can just roll on the throttle and it's perfectly controlled as he comes out. I cannot do that because I go into the corner, I'm in, I'm in a low RPM range so I don't have a lot of grunt, but then the two stroke will hit its power band which is called coming on the pipe, when the bike comes on the pipe, it gets a burst of horsepower. It'll go from about 15 or 20 horsepower to 50 in just a, in just a blink of an eye. That's why this thing will do wheelies so quickly. So I go into a corner, I can't roll on the gas because if I hit that burst of horsepower in a corner, the bike's gonna come right out from underneath me, either in the form of a wheelie or spinning out. And I can't do that with a four stroke, he can be he can be ramping his horsepower up in the corner. So I'm going in 15, 20 horsepower at a low RPM. That's about all I can do in a corner until I straighten out a little bit. And then I can get on the power. He goes into the corner, 15, 20 horsepower, low RPM. He can get it up into 20, 25 horsepower, mid throttle, and pull out of it a lot quicker than I can because he won't spin out. So when you get into these tight, these tight, turns and switchbacks, the two bikes are fairly evenly matched even though if you're looking strictly at numbers, it's not a contest. If you're just looking at paper, these two bikes are not evenly matched. As you can see. So, you get them onto an actual course and they're fairly, fairly close. I look like I'm out of control. He looks like he's in control because he's not spinning so much. And I'm spinning all over the place. But if you're on a track where you have a lot of straightaways and a lot of area to accelerate, the two stroke obviously is gonna blow the doors off that thing. But, you get into these tighter trails and you're starting stop and starting stop and it's a fairly good match. It also helps that the better riders on the slower bike gives me a if the better riders on the faster bike he would actually be able to do the corners a little bit better than I can. That's why everybody says when you're starting out you want to do a four stroke because it doesn't have that surprise horsepower that a two stroke does. Yeah, so that's why they say beginner bikes you want to go a four stroke so you get the hang of how a bike, bike handles so you're not, you're not trying to learn how a bike handles along with how a two stroke acts because those are two Woo! Those are two very, very challenging things to learn. And if you're doing them at the same time, you're probably just going to get really frustrated. I started out on a four stroke, then moved to a two stroke, then went back to a four stroke, then went back to a two stroke. And I've stayed on a two stroke since. So, yeah, I suffer a bit in the corners and tighter spots where the four stroke won't. But to me, I think it's worth it because there's just so much fun riding a two-stroke. And there's so much more economical. Man, you blow a top in on a two-stroke, it's like 150 bucks an hour's worth of work and you're back to riding. You blow the top in on a four-stroke, you're looking at some serious time and money to fix that. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Stay on the bike there, buddy. <laughs> Get it started. <laughs> yeah. Now, this loose gravelly stuff, the two stroke just can't do it. Because, I mean, you get a lot of wheel spin on, on sand. You get on this gravelly stuff, forget it. Ooh, this looks fun. 
it's like stairs but with a little more aggression that is steep <laughs> on anything like this in my life. This is just awesome. It's about as rugged as you can imagine. And it just goes on and on and on for miles. Awesome. A challenge, that's for sure. Look at this little hill. It's so little. Let's go up it on one tire. Ah, water, water. Oh, sand. All right. Whoa, nearly. Another thing about the two-stroke, four-stroke is the four-stroke you can actually use engine braking. Two-stroke, not so much. Anytime I give it gas going up those things, my front tires starts hovering. I don't like that. I'd rather have it on the ground. It's just so steep. Any little push forward lifts it up. I'm noticing my uncle has the same problem. <laughs> 